Hi guys, I'm Tommy B and today we're going to be going through making a spreadsheet like this. Now, I have literally just this second made a video that took me about an hour that to build this and when I've gone to play it back it didn't record any sound. So, what I'm going to do this time round is just show you the code and just quickly talk through it all because I really can't be bothered to go through typing all that again because it would have been like the third or fourth time because I had problems yesterday with my computer. So, um, basically what we're going to be doing, this is in uh, VBA for, uh, for Excel and in this season that I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be doing lots of different ones for uh, Access and for Excel. Um, so if you've got any ideas um, or anything that you'd like, any problems that you want like is uh, issuing and you know, Put it in the comments and we'll see if we can make a, a solution for you. So this one was something that I did at work. Um, it's a really simple thing. So if you imagine that you've got a, uh, a document and you want an ID number and maybe you put in a customer number in for example and then you put in some other stuff in, doesn't really matter. Um, and you want it to be easier for someone to save as a PDF. Um, a lot of people at my workplace, they, they don't want to be dealing with, they want it as quick as possible. So I just made them a little button but what they also needed to do it people did things in different ways so some people wanted to save it in a specific drive all the time some people wanted to save it in the same folder where they saved the spreadsheet which is this one and some people wanted to choose because they were going to do it a different place each day so this is obviously a very basic form but obviously the code in the background allows you know you could just change this and the code will still work in the background so what I did first off what you want to do is you'll need to save this as an Excel macro enabled workbook. So that's the .xlsm. And then if we go to the code, there's not too much code. You can copy and paste most of this. So you'll first off want to go to your developer tab. Now if you don't have a developer tab, simply right click on the ribbon, go to customize the ribbon. And on the right hand side here under the main tabs, you will have the option for developer. And what you'll need to do is just put a tick in there and click OK. Um, if it doesn't come up straight away, it should do. But if it doesn't, just close Excel and then load it back up and you should find it up there. And then we get these options. So what you'll want to do is go to insert. And you'll want to make sure that you're using the active X controls. And if you hover over it, you want the, uh, the command button. Command button, active X control. So then you just click on that and then drag it out like that. I'll just delete that. So on here, if you in design mode, if you click design mode off, then it actually becomes the button. And if I click that, then it will it will run the click event. So if you click on design mode, then you can click on the button and you can click right click, go to properties, and you can see the properties of it. So then you can change the name. So I've named it button save and I've just give it a caption of save. And then if you right click on it again, go to view code, it'll take you to here and it will automatically generate the click event so obviously it's the, the button name and then the click event function so the first thing is we're going to need a couple of variables to hold these two values and if you just remember that these are under G4 and G5 so we'll call the ID ref and the custom name, custom name. and we'll just give them dim ref as string, dim cus name as string and what we're going to do is we're going to straight away put the, set that variable to nothing so in case a user writes a load of stuff in there click save and then starts to write something else again it's better just to clear the variable before they click it because sometimes they won't close the actual spreadsheet down they'll just keep it open and reuse it so it's better to flush the, uh, the variable out so now we need to set the the variables, their values, so ref equals range g4 which we know is this one and then the same for the customer name range g5 and so whatever we put in there now will get put into these variables so first off what we need to do is we need to make sure that one these have been entered, something's in them otherwise the file name won't be saved anything and second of all we need to know which one of these has been selected so first off I've created these which are the option buttons or the RADs 
click on them. And it's the same thing as the buttons. You can go to the name, change the name. I've called this first one uh, just rad drive. I think it's a H drive, just as an example. So I'll just delete that. So then if we go back to the code, so I've done if rad drive equals true, which basically means it's been selected, then if range G4, this is empty, then message box, please enter an ID. Else if G5, this one, is empty, then message box, please enter a customer name. And if if that all is fine, then else it does this bit of magic here. Now this is what will PDF it and save it as a PDF. Now in this case, for the drive, we're giving it a specific file directory to go to. So what we want to write in is activesheet.export as fixed format, type equals Excel type PDF, file name, and this is where we write the file name. So in this case, I've just put a, a, a folder on the desktop called drive. Um, so be, you'll want the whole directory. And then the last bit is what you want to start to call your file. So it will open up this folder and then it will write this, it will create a file called file underscore and then you'll see that we've closed the speech marks and customer name which refers to the this reference and underscore which is just basically giving it a gap between the customer name and the reference and then finally .pdf that's important because obviously we need to keep the file its uh, file format then once we've got that we're going to go to include doc properties equals true ignore print areas equals false open after publish equals false now I've just done these you can obviously change how you want these um, so the include doc properties best to leave that on um, ignore print areas that depends on you now on my example and the one I did at work it was a form where I only wanted them to to be able to print the form off I don't want all of this blank area so I just highlighted the area that I wanted printing went to page layout print area set print area so in this case, we want to ignore print areas. We want that to be false because we want it to actually respect the the print area that I've chosen. If you didn't not bothered and you put everything in the top left hand corner and you want to use Excel standard print areas, then you can put that to true and it'll ignore the ones that are preset. Um, and then open after publish. If you want it to open the file afterwards, then you just click, you just type in true. So after it's done that, we're then going to make it do a, a message box for us, and that will basically say your file, a space, and the customer name. And it's pretty much the same as this. So it's going to use the variable, then an underscore to give it a space, and then the reference number has been saved. So what we need to do is obviously make sure that you've got enough end ifs to close them all off. So I'll just show you that bit again. In there. And I'll scroll over. Back to the end. Okie doke. So now what you can actually do is from the if statement, so if rad drive equals true, then you can actually highlight all of that and just copy it all down into the next one and then just changing the name of your other rad your other option box now i call this this wv as in this work uh, workbook which basically means it's going to save it wherever this spreadsheet is saved and the way that we do that the only thing that we have to change from the top part is here under file name this workbook dot path and the file bit which starts our file just like up here and then the rest is the same everything else is the same so I'm just going to leave that again just to make sure you've got it all written down cool and then this one is slightly different so on this one you choose I just called it rad choose it's going to be a case of when they click this we want a dialog box to pop up so they can 
direct the, uh, the dialog box to the folder to the directory that they want to save it in. So what we have to do for that one is, so if red choose equals true, basically means that's highlighted and click save. Then what we need to do is we need to make a variable for something called dire folder. It doesn't really matter what you call that. And that's going to be as a file dialog. And then we need to set dire folder equals application.file dialog open brackets MSO file dialog folder picker close brackets and then we're going to set the dire folder this variable so it doesn't it can't select multiple files um, there's no point you don't want it to select multiple files because it's actually going your role we're saving is the directory that you choose so it doesn't need to be a multiple selector so dire folder dot allow multi select equals false and then we need to show it so dire folder dot show will show the actual dialog box so basically we've set the dialog box and then we've given it to the variable dire folder and then we're telling dire folder to show now is when we can copy and paste this section it's just the same as here and again the only part that we're going to be changing is this bit here we're going to set another variable and then we're going to use that variable here so here dim dir as string and that's the dir is in directory and the directory equals dire folder this again dot selected items one in brackets and that basically puts the directory as a text text image or a text file or just text basically into the variable dir and then we can refer to the file name as dir and then continue as you did normally as the same up here, everything else is the same, it's just that dir there and this bit that's changed in this area and obviously to set it up here. And then we need to make sure that we've ended if. Now you'll notice down here we've got another private sub, so make sure this is below the end sub and create another sub, private sub worksheet underscore activate. So that basically means when the sheet or the worksheet becomes active, i.e. Um, the Excel spreadsheet is loaded up, it's going to automatically choose and highlight one of the rats. That's just in case someone doesn't click one, then it will do the do it automatically for them. Um, don't have to do that. It's just just something you can add in. So I'll just hover over again just to make sure you have got it. Like I say, all this is the same. I'm just going to scroll over from the top again. So now we've got that, we can save it, close that down, and we'll go to the developer and just click design mode off. So we can type in one, two, three, four, five, six as an ID. And um, Tommy, me, and I'm going to one, save it in H drive, which isn't actually a H drive if you remember from the code, or we've got the code, where is the code? Um, Visual Basics, there we go. We'll just scroll up, so it's this one we're looking at. Um, the file name is is that, so it's in the C drive. It's just a folder that I've put onto the desktop. So we click on that, click Save. Your file, Tommy, 123456, has been saved. So if we now go to, oh, there we go, we're in it. So Drive, File Tommy. And this basically is just a PDF, which we can see in a second when it loads up. So here, yeah, that's all it is. But obviously, if you make a nice form, then it will look good. This doesn't look good, but it can look good. That's the magic. Uh, okay, so the same folder. So I believe this is saved. Yep, uh, this is saved on the desktop, it's just here. So if we go to save now file has been saved. It's now on the desktop. There you go. And you choose, click on save, brings up the dialog box. So now we can click on, so I'll go to, I'm in the desktop. I go to drive, put it in the new folder, click OK. 
file has been saved. We'll just make sure it has done that. So we'll go to the new folder and boom, there it is. So now you can make awesome save buttons. Obviously you can add in extra things if you can. I'm going to be doing lots of different videos for um, Excel and accessing VBA. Um, so I'm going to be doing lots of databases, lots of different types of spreadsheets and different solutions for different things. So if you've got any comments, you know, please subscribe in the, for the season. Um, I'm going to be trying to put in as many solutions as I can. If you've got any issues or any problems or you had issues doing this one, please make sure you comment. If you didn't and you liked it, please subscribe and, and uh, like the video. And I will see you next time, guys. See you in a bit.